What's going on, y'all? I'm pretty sure you already know, but uh, just in case you don't, Hurricane Burl came through the city and tore some things down. I was a part of dealing with that damage, and I didn't deal with major damage. I did deal with minor damage, not to mention financial damage. I know they have things like FEMA and donation sites that I can um, log on to and try to get help, but you also got to think about it like this, bro. Um, I live in Houston. That's a very big city, bro. And so you're going to have these long line of people, whether they suffer major damage or suffer minor damage, they're going to be on these sites as well, trying to get help and assistance for their personal situation. So it'll kind of be a long, lengthy process um, where I probably won't get seen for like a month or a month and a half. So I'm coming to you guys. If you guys have any little bit you would like to spot to help your boy rebuild his life, then uh, you can uh, send it to my cash app. If you guys have Chime, um, you can also hit me up on Chime. And uh, yeah, man, that'll help support your guy on this platform, bro. I'm not asking for anything um, major. You don't have to if you don't want to, bro. But if you can help your boy out, that would be cool. But uh, this is Fist Factory. I'm your host, Neff. And I'm going to get you guys into your regular scheduled programming. Hold it, hold it, man. Hold it. What, wait. what the f is this kid doing in here? Get the hell out of here before I kick your little ass. <laughs> So it's looking like Javante Davis and Lomachenko will step into the ring and duke it out in November. And I was hearing conversations in boxing media that Lomachenko was willing to step aside and allow Shakur Stevenson to get his shot at Javante Tank Davis. And I was kind of thrown off by it, right? Because um, being put in a scenario where you get an opportunity to make a record-breaking uh, amount of money as well as take out the top dog i mean i i don't advise anybody to pass up that opportunity right like anybody bro to pass like to allow shakur stevenson and tank davis to step into the ring knowing that one of them have to lose right one of them is going to lose this fight would pretty much take away from especially when you got the notoriety as lomachenko right it would take away from the idea that you can fight them both and maybe beat them both, right? If you think about it for a second, right? If Lama steps into the ring with Javante Davis and he catch the W, right? Then he can go and fight Shakur next, which will probably be slightly easier if he beats Tank because Tank is the power puncher of the two. But say, for instance, uh, Lama loses to Tank, right? He loses this fight to Tank. Well, he could still go and fight Shakur Stevenson, bro. His name is that big. So if he can't get past Tank, he can try to go get past Shakur if he lose to them both. More than not, people will give him the excuse that he was a little bit older. And so, you know, in his heyday, they probably wouldn't have been able to pull that wool over his eyes like they did uh, in these current fights. But it is what it is in the aspect. Saying that to say, it is legit. They are trying to get um, these two gentlemen in the ring, ASAP, um, lightweight unification class. Uh, Davis versus Lomachenko targeted for November. This is going to be very interesting, bruh. And I'm not really looking at it on an offensive standpoint. If I'm being honest, I'm really looking at it as a defensive standpoint. Uh, we know that uh, Lomachenko has this Matador defense. His uh, footwork is is incredible. Um, even at his older age, like I watched him in the ring with uh, George Cambosos Jr. And Georgie really couldn't lay that much of any power on Loma. And by the time he was able to get close enough to land power, it was gone. So uh, you get George being knocked out by Loma in the late rounds. I also think the same for uh, Tank Davis. I mean, I think Tank's defense is the one uh, attribute in his game that gets slept on the most. It's just my opinion. People sleep on the fact that Tank can defend himself at all times. Uh, they always see the power, right? Um, the first thing you see when you see Tank Davis is power. You realize that he hit hard, and um, that's enough for people to say that he's that guy. But I also think that when you add the uh, aspect of defense, like the way that he guards himself um, and sets up his shots more so than um, taking a lot of damage, um, I think that's also impressive. So I think it's going to be interesting to see how Loma gets in uh, and land flush shots on Tank as well as vice versa for Tank Davis to land flush shots on Lomachenko. Now, to me, I don't think it's anything that Loma's going to really be able to do to actually get the win, right? I do think he's going to have several good rounds, especially those earlier rounds 
where he's going to be able to pull the wool over Tank's eyes, but he's going to have to have a lot of tricks in that bag because if we don't have a lot of tricks in that bag and Tank figures him out, then that's going to be catastrophic. I think the longer the fight goes, Tank is going to have a lot more success and more than not, right, he's going to get the close. I don't think that Loma is going to last 12 rounds with Javante Tank Davis. If it does go 12, then we might be in for a surprise when the judges read those scorecards. But I'm not expecting it to go 12. And I'm assuming that media is not expecting for it to go 12 as well because the excuses are already starting. Um, coming from the media, once people got the word that this will more than likely go down, people are coming out with excuses. If you guys are looking at the first paragraph, it says Javante uh, 29 is expected to be the favorite against Lomachenko due to his youth. Now, I don't think that this comes down to Tank's youth, right? Now, I do think it will play its part, but I don't think it comes down to that, right? Um, he's not the favorite because of his youth. He's the favorite because of his knockout power and his fight style in itself all right to to sleep on tanks defense and offensive style would just be to sleep on a fighter in itself you can't call a guy the face of boxing if he don't have those two things offense and defense if a guy is going into the ring with only offense he's going to lose eventually i mean you're looking at a guy like gary antoine russell a ton of power and could knock out pretty much anybody, but he didn't really get an opportunity to land those flush shots on his previous opponent and was actually beat up because his defense was lacking, right? So it's the same thing that plays out for Tank Davis, not to mention David Haney and then Ryan Garcia. Now I'm talking prior to the PED scenario. I'm not talking about once we figured everything out on the back end. I'm talking about prior to that. We didn't see Devin Haney really having much of a defensive um, struggle with any other fighters, right? Maybe slightly with Lomachenko, but definitely didn't think that it was going to happen with Ryan Garcia. We ended up seeing him getting clocked with several left hands that was putting him down. Although he fought his heart out, bro, he, he kept getting up off that mat. Um, we also seen his defense be his destruction in that fight. So, I mean, I think it really comes down to Tank's style, bro. Like, this is his style uh, that's really putting him in the expected uh, favorite seat as far as this fight is concerned, but it says it wouldn't have been that way if the fight between them had been made six years ago when Loma first showed interest in the fight. Now, I do agree with that particular sentiment and to a certain degree, I do wish that Tank wasn't as um, paranoid that Floyd Mayweather was trying to ruin his career around that time frame. But I will say this, I still think Tank beats him even at that time frame, because here's the craziest thing about what happened. Tank was a lot more reckless and a lot more aggressive then, right? He was a lot more reckless, a lot more aggressive, and nobody was going the distance at that particular point in time in his career. And not only that, but when you think about um, Lomachenko not wanting to fight Devin Haney, and then shortly after losing to Teofimo Lopez, yeah, I still think that Tank beats him even then now in this particular scenario i do think that loma has a shot right he does have a shot i maybe give him like four out of ten that's just my opinion i can't say it's a 50 50 fight especially when i think about him having to absorb tanks power loma has not faced anyone all right anyone in his career with the type of power that tank davis will hit him with and we could say the same for tank davis but that would be a lie uh, Javante Tank Davis faced not only Ryan Garcia, but he also faced Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Both of those gentlemen, in my opinion, hit harder than Lomachenko. You could take it with a grain of salt. That's just my opinion. They both hit harder than Loma. Now, I do think that Frank Martin and Lomachenko hit about the exact same, right? As far as power is concerned, I've seen Frank Martin put people down. I've seen Loma put people down. The difference between Frank Martin and Lomachenko is literally speed and defensive awareness. Those are the only two things, and I landslide those two things to Lomachenko more so than Frank Martin. So Tank will have to pick his shots and have to be smart, but that's pretty much it. If he could land his punches on Loma, and we're talking about a 12-round fight, so it's guaranteed that Tank is going to land power shots on Lomachenko. Uh, but if he could land significantly clean power shots on Lomachenko, then I see Loma going night-night. 
uh, around the mid to late rounds, we will not get 12. But if we do get 12, bro, I'm just I'm just stressing this. If we do get 12, I do think we are in for a surprise, man. We are in for a surprise with what the judges have to say. Hopefully, the fix isn't in in this fight and we can get a pure fight across the board um, where both guys are treated fairly. Um, both guys have a real shot at becoming a unified champion at 135. I do think that the winner of this fight will more than likely go on to be undisputed in the division, okay? Because um, if, if Lomachenko beats Tank Davis, then who's going to turn down that Loma fight? Nobody. If Javante Davis beats Lomachenko, who's going to turn down Tank Davis? Nobody. So at that point, they get pick of the litter of who they want to fight, and um, more than not, we'll get an opportunity to become undisputed. I'm thinking Shakur Stevenson will be the boss level at this particular uh, division at 135. He will be the boss level to see Tank Davis and Shakur Stevenson will possibly be the best fight that money could buy within the next year. I'm not saying it happening this year. It could possibly happen in the top of 2025 or around summertime of 2025. But I do think it's an interesting fight. Nonetheless, um, I know you guys are saying that Shakur is boring. This is the perfect time to talk about it. In my opinion, no, he's not. You guys can take that with a grain of salt, but I don't care. Um, he's not boring, bro. He's being smart. There's a certain level of paranoia you have to have in this ring, man. People get um, brain damage from this particular sport. Some people are not the same. Um, I was hearing people talk about speech impediments as well when it comes to boxers, bro. They get punched in their head all the time. These fighters, they go into the ring, they have a fight, they leave the ring for about a month, a month and a half, so they, their brains are able to finally start um, processing things properly again. Their body are starting to feel good and things of that nature. And then they go right back into the gym to start sparring. So, of course, you're going to get guys with speech impediment, guys stuttering and things of that nature. Guys who are not all there um, mentally to a certain degree, bro, because they're warriors. They're not common people like us. So, it is what it is in the aspect. So, to see Shakur Stevenson still having his wits about him, he can still have good conversation. He don't stutter. Like, stuff like that, that's because he preserves his body, bro. And that takes a real talent. That takes real art for him to be able to do that. He shouldn't be out here trying to defend his fighting style on his Twitter account. Like, I just seen somebody today say, like, he uh, he's dropped, like, 230-plus tweets since his fight um and that's incredible to them or whatever the case may be because they like to call him twitterson right shakur twitterson whatever the case may be um yeah that's because you guys keep uh bad mouthing him bro in the public and um he's winning so it is what it is in the aspect you can't uh look for a guy like shakur stevenson to not be a boxer right and then you guys were saying to Errol Spence Jr. that you don't know how to box. Like, you dig what I'm saying? Like, you guys got to pick your poison. Nobody ever says that Lomachenko was doing too much moving around the ring, right? Nobody ever said that Pacquiao brought the fight too much and maybe need to start working on boxing. Like, nobody says that those kind of things. So why give Shakur Stevenson those narratives? If you ask me, Shakur, fight your fight, bruh, and um, prove to the world that you champion, especially really soon because you might get one of these guys ASAP, where you get to show the world how you really get down. But this is Fist Factory. I'm your host, Neff, and I'm signing out, man. Can't wait to see this fight. My money will be on tanking this one. I'm not gambling on it, but my money will be on tanking this one. But I do think if it goes 12, all right, this, this, I think Tank got a knockout Loma. Um, if, it, if, it, if, if he don't get the knockout and this fight goes 12, bro, I think we're going to be surprised. And I do mean surprised with what the judges is going to say um, as far as their scorecards is concerned. So we'll be on the lookout for this fight. Um, as soon as I see something, I'll tell you guys what's going on. But again, this is Fist Factory. I'm your host, Neff, and I'm signing out. Y'all take it easy, bruh. Peace. What's going on, y'all? I'm pretty sure you already know, but uh, just in case you don't, Hurricane Burrow came through the city and tore some things down. I was a part of dealing with that damage, and I didn't deal with major damage i did deal with minor damage not to mention financial damage i know they have things like fema and donation sites that i can um log on to and try to get help but you also gotta think about it like this bro um i live in houston that's a very big city bro and so you're gonna have these long line of people whether they suffer major damage or suffer minor damage they're going to be on these sites as well 
trying to get help and assistance for their personal situation. So it'll kind of be a long, lengthy process um, where I probably won't get seen for like a month or a month and a half. So I'm coming to you guys. If you guys have any little bit you would like to spot to help your boy rebuild his life, then uh, you can uh, send it to my cash app. If you guys have Chime, um, you can also hit me up on Chime. And uh, yeah, man, that'll help support your guy on this platform, bro. I'm not asking for anything um, major. You don't have to if you don't want to, bro. But if you can, help your boy out. That would be cool.